Boop. Tanya. Hi. I should probably wait for the question. <laughs> I've been in the writing room like all day and no one talks to me. I write like I can see it, right? I write like this, and then I walk or run away, and then I <laughs> come back in. I probably should have my own office, but I also love to collaborate. I just have to say, I love the way you're sitting right now. And I don't know what it means. I sat like this for a poster, like when we poster, I was like, I feel this is a good position. And basically when the poster came back, it's like all ass. I heard about London, England, and the School of RADA, the Royal Academy, growing up in Amherst, Nova Scotia. There was two incredible women. I can't say enough about them. They changed the course of my life. Not to be too cheesy, but like, thank you, Bet and Beverly and they started a drama program within our elementary school. So I'd heard about the school then, and you know how kids are, and I'd be like, you know, in my like velour shorts and no top, you know what I mean? Like buying your dad's cigarettes at the corner store, and I'd be like, probably go there, whatever. You know, like that confidence of a kid's like, ah, I'll probably go get classically trained <sighs> when I'm done here playing a goose. The thing I learned the most from was raising money to go to school. And I just wanna say thank you to everyone that helped me Learning how to receive graciously is such a gift. And I didn't have that then. There was people that would mow lawns that would give me, and I still can't sleep over it. So by the time I got to the Royal Academy, I just was like on it. Do you know what I mean? It gave me so much room to fail because I was like, fuck it. I'm on other people's money. I'm here to learn. I got three years. Let's do this shit. If you can push something right below failure, that's a pretty exciting place to be. But what really gave me the most incredible training going there, it was the support that I had and what it pushed me to do. Was that a short answer? Not at all, but it was a great answer. We're gonna fix the lighting for one sec. Tanya, what's up? How you been? <laughs> what you been? <laughs> what you been doing? Hanging out. Just hanging out. Yeah. Cool. Me too. You know, I'd raised money. I had classical training. I worked for Shakespeare's Globe Theater. You know, I had a career. I had a life, and then I was like, I know what I want to do. Go live with my parents again, pregnant, and have a kid there. But it was weird. It wasn't like I was like 22 when this happened. I was like 36. I'm gonna sound like total cheese bag, but it was like the best. It was like totally the best. I became like best buds with my mom. And the other thing it was like having to move back home was like, I gotta get a job. So I started to create content at the same time I was applying for jobs. And the one thing I noticed when I came back to Canada was I wasn't seeing as much female fronted content as I was in Britain. I met this amazing writer named Carolyn Taylor. Carolyn and I worked on the idea for a little while. Then she introduced me to the other women and then all four of us really developed a show together. The picture for Baroness, this is what I love about working like we're all 40 plus. We don't fuck around. We were like, all right, it's gonna sound natural, but it's gonna be rehearsed. Baroness Von Sketch Show is created by four women, all over 40, who do their best to write in a voice of what they see. When you're decontaminating the area, you need to use clean water. Wow. And no harsh soaps, and only use the washcloth ones. Okay, so don't do that anymore. I know how to wash myself, you know why? Because I'm an adult. What is your relationship with fear? I think in my 40s, the one thing I realized is I've always been like, oh, I'm not afraid to fail. I was like, oh no, I'm terrified to fail. It's horrible. I am scared to do things. I will cry the night before. I am super, super hard on myself, but I'll do it anyway. <laughs> I go through it all, but I don't let it stop me. Because every season I'm like, oh, I'll tell you what I'm not gonna do, that. Every year I'm like, okay, oh, that's it. I'm not getting naked. I had never been in naked before in camera. No one's ever asked me, don't know why. But here I am in my 40s and I was like, you know what I'm gonna do for the first time in a comedy sketch show when the lighting's not amazing? Get my breastfed tits out. That's what I'm gonna do. Just need a little lift. This isn't what I wanted. Maybe he's into action. Okay, self-timer. Do you like Mackie? Mm. Even this morning, I was like, I'm gonna write a sketch on this, and I don't think you can do it. And then I was like, McNeil, I think you get off on fear just a little bit. Do you often call yourself McNeil? I don't think I've ever done it before. But for this interview, I've just called myself McNeil. You're welcome. <laughs> Is there any position in that chair that you feel like you haven't sat yeah, in? Yeah, can I do it? You... There's a couple of things I just need to try out. No, we're insured, we're good. Okay, what if I break the chair? Maybe a little of this? Hi. 
Hello, my name is Meredith McNeil. This is my brief but spectacular take on being so lucky.